It has been nearly a week since a six-year-old girl went missing in Telangana. She was then found brutally raped and murdered in Hyderabad in the house of the man who is now suspected to be the accused. The rapist and the murderer of a six-year-old, neighbor of a six-year-old who allegedly took her away, brutalized her in his own house and then ran away from there. The Hyderabad police has not managed to track him down for six days. So much so that they have now announced a reward of 10 lakh rupees for anybody who can provide information. They've even released the detailed information about this 30-year-old. But for six days, this man has been roaming free. He still roams the streets in some part of this country, somewhere, either in Hyderabad or somewhere else. A danger to the society, roaming free. There has been massive confusion, not just the fact that they haven't found the accused. The ministers aren't even being properly briefed on what is going on. K.D. Rama Rao actually a couple of days ago tweeted expressing his shock over this incident while saying that the accused has been arrested. The accused had not been arrested. The minister later claimed he was misinformed. Then came along another minister who actually, without hesitation, called for instant justice. And he said that the accused should be encountered. We will nab the accused and encounter him. We stand by the family. This is what Mr. Mallareddy, a minister in the state of Telangana, has said. My simple question tonight is when a state fails to control law and order, when a state fails to prevent crime, when a state fails massively to catch such a criminal and appears utterly clueless about what's going on in a city like Hyderabad, then is there only way out is to pro promise an encounter, an extrajudicial killing even before you're able to nab him? In the neighboring state, a similar instance took place a few years ago, where under pressure, the police very quickly picked up the few suspects. And on the way, transporting them for custody from one place to the other, killed them in an encounter. The investigation into that encounter <clears throat> just recently concluded they claim this to be a big step. Took it to the waters, claiming what a great way of providing justice. And now the neighboring state of Telangana seems to be planning the same even before they have napped him. Is encounter a way in our country to cover up our policing failures, our law and order failures? And can it really become such an acceptable part of our society where the wheels of justice move so slowly that people lose faith and then states decide on their own that instant justice is on the way. I say good evening to Karuna Gopal of the BJP, Bachu Srinivas of the TRS, Flavia Agnes, women rights lawyer, and Mr. Yashovardhan Azad, former IPS officer joining me this evening as well. And I want to start off with Mr. Bachu Srinivas. Mr. Srinivas, help me understand this comment. You haven't even nabbed the man and you're talking about gunning him down. Uh, very good evening to everyone. See, the situation 
and the emotion and the demand of opponents and made to give a such a statement but it doesn't mean that we are going to encounter the person we catch him and we do the justice the law will punish the concerned person who is uh, accused the person will be punished it doesn't mean that we are going to be encountered compulsory compulsory the emotional statement of a minister has given that definitely that the congress and other opponent parties have made the demanded and even lot of people are today demanding in telangana state definitely he has to be uh, encountered this is the people's and opponent uh, political parties demand and voice and that particular voice the minister has given a statement will catch will support the family and definitely the accused will be punished it doesn't mean that we are going to gun him or we are going to kill him by and will is listen if really situation demands if really situation leads if really he makes the situation to encounter him then we can't do anything and nobody can't do anything and what, the, and what, what i don't understand I how what that means mr shrinivas if really the situation demands here is a case where after 6 days of a brutal rape and murder we have no idea where this accused is this 30 year old man is but we, we are building these dreams and castles in the air talking about when we find him and we punish him if a situation arises where things be- seem to go out of control then we will encounter him the sometimes we in case of in this country are in, in case of terrorism naxalism anti social elements things takes place definitely the law will the police people will do sometimes encounter it doesn't mean that they have taken the law into their hands nobody is the, uh, uh, as per the constitution of india nobody is not here to take the law into their hands and we agree we abide the and we respect the constitution of india the telangana government and no way we are what we stand is we punish we very clearly telling with the mirror through the mirror channel to the viewers of entire nation and we accuse we punish we catch him okay the trs they are promising that we will catch him and punish him mr yashovardhan azad but i am concerned about the noise around this act the noise around what should be the basic response a policing response you find the evidence you find the man and you build a strong case so that due punishment is given in a court of law we don't even seem to be looking in that direction there are two things here uh, tanvi first of course uh, the police should have uh, nabbed him now that they know him there might be some issues there and i'm i'm not going to say it's a complete police failure definitely police has been slow but i'm sure he's going to be nabbed the other thing is that on matters like police and policing the correspondents tend to ask people you know, like labor minister or somebody who are really who who are not authorized to speak on police and policing obviously that was a highly sensitive remark and a remark which which sort of downgrades their own uh, criminal justice system and their capability so if you are degrading your own capability you are virtually advocating a kangaroo justice because you 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 think this is playing to the gallery this is this is to make happy people happy but the unfortunate part is that the all the political parties are doing it i i i believe there some other party spokesman also said perhaps the same thing and the worst part is that in many cases like this even the public supports this kind of a cause and why the public supports is because the wheels of the justice system go slow and slow and slower and therefore it is the responsibility of the political leadership not to give these idiotic statements i mean they they obviously uh, reveal that there is some kind of a banana republic where there is no justice at all so two things first i think the police should nab the criminals very fast 
In fact, I would remind them that there is a Disha law in uh, Andhra Pradesh. And after Nirbhaya Act, it has been made so stringent, the punishment for such uh, you know, actions, that they should strive to bring justice to these people rather than just exterminating them you know, through an encounter. You, well, yes, I mean, uh, you, you, you uh, mentioned the incident of Disha Act, which also came in the light of another horrifying case that came out from Andhra Pradesh, which also unfortunately ended up in, a, 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 uh, you know, in a similar way, instant justice. The, the government there was extremely happy about it. And then for more, for, to, to cater to people's emotions, as they say, they in fact brought in this law where they claim that they're going to finish the investigation in 15 days and file the charge sheet in the next seven days. In only 32% of the cases since the Disha Act has come into play, in only 32% of the cases have they managed to file some kind of a charge sheet, let alone the rest of it. Um, so, the, you know, the debate over the practicalities of such law in Maharashtra, there is a Shakti law, uh, has not deter uh, stopped the brutal crimes, the spate of brutal crimes that have taken place, you know, in Maharashtra just in the last week, 10 days. Flavia Agnes, when a minister talks about and assures instant justice in the form of an encounter, even before they've actually got the suspect in their hands, is that a direct message to the investigating authorities on what has to be done? It is indeed. And it is shocking that a minister can say these kind of state statements. And is absolutely playing to the gallery. The public want instant justice because the police missionary is failing, the courts are failing, and they want immediately action to be taken without a trial. And it will be a banana republic in that sense, that police will do whatever they want. And do we want to abide by a system which is like this, that police can catch anyone and say he's the accused person, and we have encountered him, we have done away with him, and what kind of uh, uh, democracy are we talking about? So it is the wrong signal coming from the minister. And it gives the police a free hand. Because as somebody else also commented right now, if the situation demands, maybe we might do it. I mean, what's the meaning of that? The situation should not demand it. You have to take enough care that a person is uh, caught the person is uh, produced before uh, a magistrate. The person is sent to judicial custody and a trial will take place. Now, without a trial, how can you pronounce a wording that this person is the guilty man and that person should be done away with? So why do we have a, a system, a criminal justice system in our country if this is it? And will this reduce the rates in the country that are going on right now? There seems to be a spate of killing that are rapes and murders that are going on. So are we going to do this to every person that will catch, police will catch him and do away with him? So I feel that even the public sentiment should not be directed towards this direction. There has to be a restraint. When a minister makes a comment, he is a responsible person. He's not a lay person. You cannot make this random kind of statements which are totally irresponsible. Oh, and absolutely. The police, yes. Police machinery is failing. The courts are failing. People are losing faith. And they say the police must do the need. But when you do that, I mean, tomorrow it will be your brother, your son, somebody close to you. And, and the police do the same thing. What will happen? We have gone through emergency. We have gone through all these kind of uh, arrest without trial, incarceration without trial. Can you go back to that situation just because the police are failing their duty? I think it is it is a wrong signal and no one should say such things in a case. And even the Disha encounter killings were totally wrong. Though the public applauded it, it is totally wrong signal to the society. And all the judges, including the chief justice, condemned it. Yes. You cannot go for instant justice at all. But I, I want to, I want to, since we are talking about public sentiment and the tendency of politicians is to say we're giving into that public sentiment and that is why we're doing this. I want the people to know it's because your governments and thereby the law and order machinery are failing to do their job. Let's just take Telangana as an example. And here, here is the reality on, uh, uh, for Telangana. 
Crime against women in this state is 70% higher than the national average. The rate of crime against women is 95.4 per 1 lakh women. 11% rise in crime against women between 2018 and 2020. 11% rise. The conviction rate, which is abysmally low across the country, is 16% lower than the national average in the state of Telangana. So not only are you weak in preventing crimes, Mr. Srinivas, you're also weak in providing justice, in providing conviction. You're also weak in implementing the laws that you have. And so this is an easy way out, Mr. Srinivas, for you and your government to say, oh, now I, people are angry, so let's talk about an encounter. No, uh, you cannot say that the government is not weak as compared to the, in India so far, out of 29 states, that the crime rate, the, the crime rate in top 10 states, when we compare, the Telangana is not there in the top 10. It doesn't mean that we are right, we are doing good. Definitely, the things which are happening, everybody is feeling about it, we are Everybody is pity on that. See, unethical things, see, such kind of things should not happen. Still, Telangana government is taking care of the land order in, in Telangana state, especially by recruiting the more police and, and ma maintaining more she teams, and especially women, women police, recruiting women police and women police stations. But still, as you are mentioning the statistics, Comparatively, the national average to Telangana state average, yes. it is acceptable. Definitely, the government is taking more precautions. We are arranging the CC cameras and we are we made more commissionerates in this seven and a half years of time uh, tenure. And we are taking all kinds of precautions and measures. No, Mr. Srinivas, if the... you think you are, you're not doing a very good job of it. Let me just point out to you, I quoted to you data about the rise in crime uh, uh, in the state of Telangana from 2018 to 2020. That is actually a time yes. where crime against women on a national basis has gone down. This is data from NCRB that has just come out including 2020 and that's the analysis we've done there's been a decline in crime against women of 8.3 percent from 2019 to 2020 in the country not in the state of telangana we also looked at okay is there an intent and if work is being done we looked at the your utilization of the nirbhaya fund a fund that was created over a decade ago for states to utilize to strengthen security for women in the state you not even utilize whatever little you sought from the center not even 45 percent of that has been utilized so if you say you are doing your best sir you have to go back and see what is it that your government is doing karuna gopal joins me this evening of the bjp karuna gopal this seems to be the larger sentiment like yashavadan azad was pointing out i also heard a congress leader saying the same thing gunning for encounter of this rape and murder accused is that the same sentiment of the bjp also we are it's far from it far from it tanvi i have uh, there's a sociological uh, phenomenon or uh, element in this now let me explain the whole thing um, in uh, in telangana most of us are um, a typical telangana it is kind of hooked on to the tollywood and if you look at the tollywood i'm just trying to give the larger perspective and uh, the the psyche of people. They are hooked on to Tollywood and 60 to 70% of the heroes are policemen. Not just policemen, but gun-toting policemen who say that we will encounter the culprit. Now, the whole community gets the adrenaline high when they listen to these dialogues. And I think maybe the minister also was perhaps a victim of this kind of a hype. Another important thing to understand is Telangana has a history. It has set a precedent from the, from the last incident you mentioned that took place in 2019. When that young doctor was molested, raped, and finally killed on 28th November 2019, 
in a very filmy style in a filmy style please note that in a filmy style in just a week's time the police haul up four people and they uh, encounter them they kill them now sadly sadly that today the very same encounter is being investigated by a committee set up by the supreme court yes and there's whole bunch of discrepancies being found there are so many discrepancies first of all there are no fingerprints found on the pistols or pouches or even batons of the policemen because the police claim they killed the culprits in self defense <laughs> but nothing absolutely nothing was there the second thing is there was um, a uh, i would say asymmetrical data like in terms of the some the affidavit says there are no cc cameras in the place where they were put no but you're absolutely right says, karuna gopal uh, for what you're saying and those are the findings that have pointed out a lot of lapses but then let's get realistic i don't think they intended for the people to believe that this was actually uh, you know that they were shot down and killed in in an act of self defense the andhra government and, and the, their their spokesperson and the leaders were very clear in sending out the message that this is our way of giving instant justice no, no, ex- so there exactly. so, so there is then, it's not a shock that the, the committee is now finding this no they were sending out the message to the common man at large saying that we have encountered we have solved your problems and overnight the police became the hero and the chief minister who is behind the police also became the hero so people bought the entire story of this you know we we got the culprits we killed them we delivered justice instant justice that you want but when it comes to investigation invest because the police also can be indicted for crime and um, murder charges can be put on them now today they say it is in self defense they killed them so the investigations are throwing up unbelievable things like for instance they say that when they were asked did you shoot give give a warning shot they say yes but which which weapon was used ak47 now everybody knows ak47 just it just cannot stop with one bullet mm-hmm. it just gives out 10 bullets and why were they using long range weapons they are not meant to use and why were they also uh, why was this special team set up to actually investigate organized crime was present at a small rape case and a mur- uh, you know made murder very uh, uh, strange things and the funniest part is the belongings of the victim the young veterinarian who was really um, killed has not been sent for forensic analysis so so essentially what is this this yes. is unbelievable so obviously it's filmy style it is just a hogwash it is to just present to the people that oh, it is. we have and we and, have and i fear that. that this time we're getting more and more we're getting so brazen about it uh, uh, mr yashowardhan azad that this time we're not even waiting to find the accused and we're already set, uh, you know setting the stage we are not understanding that the tenor of the argument uh, which uh, the honorable lady is giving if it's a tirade against the police or a, a police and counter system we are all for her but how does she explain all these encounters are not only taking place in telangana they are taking place in up too they are taking place in all the states with all the governments so the question is we are here to analyze as to how to stop crimes against women first is the prevention and second is how do we investigate and how we can make police more efficient the utilization of nirbhay funds mm. look at the utilization in the bjp rule states look at the utilization in even in congress state or other states they are almost more or less the same it's a systemic failure so there is no point in scoring political points or to castigating police hmm. let me tell you telangana police is one of the most outstanding police in its performance against the naxalites and in fact that model is to be emulated in other states so let us talk about this particular issue the issue is very clear that the police has not been able to nab the culprits culprit five last seven days the second point is 
those ministers were not the right men to be asked this question. Third, I think it is the duty of the police of Hyderabad that they should come out and give a kind of a press conference almost every day on, st on giving the status of the case. And I would request the TRS leader here, here that, so that to shore up people's confidence, they should give the exact facts. So we are here to prevent another crisis, to you know, kind of assess it, rather than you know, launching into kind of a tirade against the police, the encounter system, because it's happening everywhere. So how do you explain in other states? No, in fact, it is not a tirade against just the police because I would say the police at the end of the day, uh, you know, will... One minute, please, Karuna Gopal. The police at the end of the day is also a reflection of the state administration and the state's intent. And I just want to bring this fact back to Mr. Srinivas. Mr. Srinivas, contrary to what your claims are, and maybe that was the reality in 2018, but like I said, the NCRB data has just come out today, and Telangana is actually... It ranks third amongst all states in rate of crime against women after Assam and Bihar. So something's not right in the state. If actually you're saying you were far better, much earlier and not even in the top 10. Okay, Tanvi, I, 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 as I know, as I believe, as I have an idea about the information which I have, it was not in the top 10. So that I feel till till just you explain the uh, data that my my state and my Hyderabad is very far from the crime. We are very proud of it, but still still we feel that definitely things we 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 overcome in future and definitely things should not such kind of things should not happen. For that sake, the RS government will work more and more and effectively. That's only the option to the government to do the best to the people. Okay, well, yes, Karuna Gopal wanted to say something earlier. Yeah, I just uh, I just wanted to answer uh, Mr. Azhar. Um, I, while I agree with whatever you are saying, sir, uh, we know that uh, in UP, elsewhere also, uh, the police certainly is responding only to the diktats of the political heads. So nobody singularly uh, blames the police force. We also know that the, your 1861 police uh, act is still very much in place. The police reforms have to take place. There's a lot that is required, and I, I agree the shackles that you also experience. But uh, having said that, today we are discussing what happened in uh, Hyderabad and how uh, they everybody glorifies the word encounter, which perhaps uh, being uh, uh, being a part of the police system you should um, maybe spread the word that the political bosses or even the normal people should refrain from demanding uh, encounters because that is instant justice is may not be justice at all. Well, uh, Tanvi, the most important part, you've been asking Srinivas about uh, uh, how NCRB um, you know, uh, ratings are pretty deplorable when it comes to uh, Hyderabad. Um, you know, in the recent past, you find uh, the ministers like KTR just tooting about Hyderabad's safety and security. Our city, of course, undeniably, we were perhaps the, you know, the first city to have come out with facial recognition, command and control centers, predictive policing protocols using big data. Uh, then uh, um, there, there are so many things in place, but the she teams, highly tooted, and KTR tells that uh, Yogi Adityanath has borrowed his concept. Yes. Now, when this, you know, uh, boasting, uh, he should learn to keep it aside, become a little bit of, uh, you know, display humility, mm. and look at at least putting street lights in place, Tanvi. We don't have basics in place. You know, it's like you, you talk about artificial intelligence, machine learning, huge reforms, showcasing, all that is not necessary. Uh, have basic things like street lights in place, have responsive, um, you know, uh, gender resource centers uh, where women can um, lodge their complaints. I mean, today when I saw the Mint Fresh report NCRB, where right. Telangana has really, you know, shot up in crime, and in fact, tra trafficking. 
Okay, you know, the point that you've made, Karuna, yeah. let me ra take that across to Flavia Agnes as my last question, Flavia Agnes. Instead of, um, you know, what seems extremely attractive and the right way to provide justice with encounters or tougher laws where you will finish the case in seven days, file the charge sheet in 15 days and etc, etc. What is it that the police and the state government really need to focus on to battle this? According to me, the police have totally failed because it was not a gang, it was a neighbor. And there was a missing complaint uh, in, from the family of this six-year-old. Then why did the police not investigate properly for six days? Why could they not find where this child was? Uh, and their first option is to look at the neighborhood, look at the people around and, and find out where this missing child is taken. And they have failed to do this. And this is, according to me, is a gross negligence on the part of the police. I do not think the police took this seriously at all. Now that the rape and murder has come out into the public domain, now they are saying that we will nab the uh, accused, we will uh, nab the culprit, etc. But what were they doing for six days? If the uh, Telangana police is so good and so efficient, then why did, could they not see the child in their own neighborhood being, being abused like this? They could have saved the child. Maybe they would have been raped, but they wouldn't have been murdered if the accused was not. Now, to say that let's do encounter, let's find that guy, let's reward, uh, place a reward uh, for um, finding this uh, accused person, etc., is all, according to me, hogwash. It doesn't amount to anything. And what it means is that even children are not safe in their own neighborhood, in their own surroundings. Yes. And that is something very dismal, something very frightening, that every parent who has a small child today uh, will be wondering what's going to happen to my child. Will my child be safe? So what are the safety measures? If a child is missing, and if there is a missing child complaint, then what are the mechanisms the police use, either in Telangana or anywhere in the country? No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, you know, uh, uh, and the fact that you know, the, a lot of these crimes actually do occur in and around the homes itself by somebody known is, is, is a well-established fact. So let's move on from the rhetoric. And let's stop using encounters as a way to cover up, cover up failures and to give an easy out. What is going to be the motivation for any policeman to actually do his job properly if there is no accountability, if you're not going to ask them that six years on, why are you not able to find this one criminal? He's not a hardened terrorist or a Naxalite. He's a man who was living in a family residential setup, who picked up a six-year-old from next door, raped her, murdered her, left her in his own house and ran away. And for six years, you've still not managed to find him. If politicians at such a point begin to talk about encounters, you're giving an easy way out to the policemen who are failing to do their job. And thereby you are failing the people of your own state. Thank you for joining us on this conversation.